All right, so just when you didn't think I could do another video on Indiana Jones toys, especially with them, you know, ripped out of store shelves, here is one. Why? Well, I kind of went a little all in. I said I wasn't going to buy every figure. I was very picky, especially at the price point, and that was true, but I didn't count on holiday gifts. Well, a lot of my friends and family who watch my videos saw that, and I wound up getting quite a few figures for the holidays. In fact, almost a complete collection. And while some of the accessories are interchangeable, shall we say, with the three and three fourth ones, the more I get into this line, and yes, the price point absolutely was a, a block for me. And I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. Not to mention the fact that these were in closed packaging, and as beautiful as they look, as boxes, God, I wonder what would have happened if Hasbro had sold these in actual traditional open, you know, blisters where you could see the figure. Would it still be on shelf today if they'd done that despite the movie bombing? I don't know. But I will tell you, while I wasn't going to get all of the, uh, the building artifacts, because I didn't buy a full wave through the magic of holiday gifts, <laughs> that wound up happening. And the more I got some obscure figures that I wasn't expecting to buy, I was so impressed. I mean, Hasbro really pulled out all the stops. All right, so here's the skull, right, for the Shankara stones. Now, there's actual little indentions in the eye holes for the stones to go, which I was not expecting, which actually, you know, they will stay in place. I mean, you can, you know, flick them back and then, you know, kind of pull them out of the teeth there. But yeah, see that little like round divot there? They each have one, the nose and the other eye, but obviously the nose doesn't, there's no hole there. So it's also interesting how they didn't promote so many of these features. If you look at the back of the hypnotized Indiana Jones figure, it looks like the Shankara stones glow. But you actually get two complete sets, a glowing set and a non-glowing set, although only one of them gets stripes, which I don't know why. Didn't they all have stripes? Maybe I'm wrong. All right, well, that's the one that came from the village. So now, while there were plenty of promotional images that did show this, I thought they just glowed in the dark. I didn't realize we were looking at two completely different sets. And the call-out, the, the, the you know, piece count on the back of the package definitely does not let alone call this out, but how they, they work with the skull. Again, like that's, to me, that's the extra mile, like putting that little indented divot there for the Shankara stones to rest in so that they don't, you know, they're not constantly falling over. It's a little thing. It really is. See, that's hard to get in. But yeah, once, you, once you get it in, it stays up. Come on. I knocked it through. All right. But they do stay. And that's, that's cool. Also, this indie comes with a unique satchel bag that opens and you can put the, the stones inside which none of the other indies have this. Theirs is molded shut. It's one piece. So this is, a, again, an, an, this is not shown on the package as a feature. And it also just reinforces how putting these in these closed boxes really hurt sales. Because if this was in an open box, you'd see all those stones. All right, the other accessory build an artifact I went for through the magic of holiday gifts, thank you friends and family, was the grail table. So I wasn't, again, expecting to get the extra figures, especially because I needed to buy some from the Dial of Destiny movie, but those quickly went on eBay, and I just kept the actual Grail table parts. Is that, is that, is that an actual term? All right. So uh, I, I was also amazingly blown away by this, because while Last Crusade, well, uh, I kind of go back and forth between Temple of Doom. I mean, I was going to buy every Last Crusade figure. I would have bought every Temple of Doom figure if they came out with Mola Ram, if they actually made the major villain. So with this wave, like I said, I had to get some figures from the fifth movie. Not too excited about that, just to get my build and artifact pieces, but thanks to the magic of eBay. But again, while most of the pieces are just, you know, generic blobs of plastic, the flat top, the tabletop, is an unbelievable piece. I mean, you could just have this. You don't even need the rest of the pieces. Unfortunately, it comes with that sailor guy who got killed in the movie. Uh, Ronaldo after like, you know, two seconds. But look at this. All of the grails and the cups, again, have divots to put them in, which is really cool because it keeps them from falling over. And if you want to create the exact table from the movie, you can. There's specific spots. Oops. Well, okay. I knocked that over, but you get what I'm talking about. All right. Another thing to talk about is the hat. Now, obviously, Indiana Jones is known for this hat. He's known as the man in the hat. And again, Hasbro really went above and beyond. Everyone's going to say I'm a shill for Hasbro, but I'm really just a fanboy here and a toy maker talking about how much he appreciates a company that goes the extra mile. So, okay. So while we didn't get too many removable hat indies, we get an articulated hat, which I don't know if I've ever seen this before. I'm sure there's some Japanese toys that have this, but that is really cool. You could do like, you know, taking a nap, looking to the left, looking to the right. 
really impressed. It's not meant to pull off. Kind of like Shira's mask was not meant to pull off because he otherwise you're left with a hole in his head. Now, hats on toys has always been a tough thing. I thought that the way Palisades toys handled it with the Muppet Show was one of the most innovative. They had a embedded magnet in the head and in the hat so that it stuck. And the magnet was painted over so it wouldn't actually, you couldn't pull it out. It was, it was embedded into the plastic and covered with more plastic. So that was a really innovative way to keep hats on heads because, yeah, losing hats, they, they fall off action figures really, really easily. Uh, you know, unless there's a peg or a magnet, good luck not losing that after a while. And glasses is another thing that toy lines struggle with. Now, there's a couple different ways companies have done this. They've either painted on eyeballs onto glasses. They have done just like wire rims without the glass, like the uh, this Wayland Smithers figure here. Or, and more's the pity, doing uh, big oversized white goggles even without the dot. I think this looks awful. I actually cut these glasses off of this Peter Parker. It was just like, really? Like, that just ruined the figure for me. All right, so yes, glasses and hats are tough. And several of the figures in the final wave came with glasses and hats. Here's where, again, I'm impressed of Hasbro going above and beyond. When you put the hats and the glasses on these figures, they don't come off. Like, they really don't. I mean, you can pull it off, right? You can pull the, the, the hat off and you can pull the glasses off. But once they're on, they just stay. I mean, look at this. Like, you can, like, shake these figures and they don't. That, that's amazing to me as a toy maker. Finding a way to do that above and beyond. And while, unfortunately, the Indiana Jones line had to end, hey, it's great to see such good quality. I hope you appreciated this video. I promise not to make too many more Indiana Jones toy videos. Unless they come up with more toys, that is. Or I find something else to talk about. I don't know. What do you guys think? Any subjects you want me to cover? Let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. It's the best way to support this channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.